Hello everyone, this is uh, Kevin Jones from uh, PCI Geomatics. Really excited to be here. We're going to be starting our broadcast uh, just in, in, about a, in about a minute or so. So uh, I'm just gonna turn off my camera and uh, we'll be right back. All right, it looks like most people have come into the room and we're ready to start. It's 11 o'clock on the nose. So I'm gonna introduce uh, June McLary, our president and CEO. Over to you, June. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. I'm incredibly excited to share our announcement with you. Since joining PCI in March of this year, I've been truly impressed by the breadth and the depth of the technology and the solutions that this company has developed over its history. PCI has been at the forefront of Earth observation innovation for years. And today, we see the need for different conversations to produce different outcomes to 21st century geoscience issues that we face globally. Simply put, we want to leave the Earth in a better place than we found it. In order to do so, we need the interoperability of multidisciplinary data including Earth observation, in the hands of a broader base of users to produce these outcomes. Said another way, we believe that Earth data should be simple to use by everyone. At PCI, we decided that if we want to change how people think about Earth observation, then we need to change how people think about PCI, both internally and externally. And with that, I am so very proud to introduce Catalyst. Earth data is collected on a daily basis to manage projects, resources, and to better understand how the Earth is changing. Data collected from the ground, space, and across time can reveal new insights. We see the integration of multi-sector Big Earth data to gain new insights as one of today's biggest challenges. What if we could bring technologies together and put it into the hands of decision makers, providing the ability to look back in time and into the future? We could make a difference and ensure we leave the Earth a better place. It's time to change how we manage our planet for future generations. Catalyst. Earth data simplified. Earth data. All right. Thank you, June, for that introduction. And uh, I want to say a few things about the new branding. Um, this is Kevin here, uh, VP of uh, Product and Marketing at uh, at uh, Catalyst, PCI Geomatics of Brand. And uh, what I'd like to say, uh, hopefully uh, what you're getting from the new branding is that really we're at a turning point in terms of changing and giving a fresh perspective in terms of how Earth data can be used. We truly believe that Earth data should be simplified to put it into the hands of end users. Uh, in fact, part of our mission is to make actionable Earth observation intelligence available to decision makers that seek to ensure a sustainable and manageable planet. As you can see on this slide, we are not only offering our traditional products that you are familiar with, uh, Geomatica, GXL, those are uh, have a new name, uh, Catalyst Professional and Catalyst Enterprise, but we're really excited to bring new products to market to put this technology into the hands of more uh, downstream end users. The uh, analytics portion of the geospatial market is one of the fastest growing portions of our industry, and we are very excited to bring our science that we have been developing for many decades to bear to solve new challenges, as, as June has alluded to in the uh, introduction. So at this point, I'm going to pass over to Dan Watt, who's our CTO, and Dan's going to walk you through how we deliver this technology in new ways. Dan, over to you. Thanks a lot, Kevin. 
Uh, in the past, we've offered software packages that contain a large number of algorithms, either for the desktop or server, depending upon which product you had purchased. We've listened to the feedback from our customers, and, and what you've told us is that you like our science and you would like to consume that science in different ways. Each of you is unique, solving different problems, and we've come up with six different models to meet the demanding needs of your unique situations. Catalyst Services breaks down our traditional product into its component algorithms, and it lets you consume them through a series of microservices hosted in the cloud. You assemble the algorithms the way you need them and only pay when you use them. There's no hardware to purchase or configure. It scales on a level that's never been seen before, and the services are portable, meaning that the processing moves to the data, not the other way around, reducing the time to see results and making processing costs predictable and directly related to your work. Catalyst Insights is built on Catalyst Services. Insights makes complex geoscience visible in an easy, easy to understand way. It also combines Earth observation data with non-EO data to provide a comprehensive way of understanding problems related to the Earth. Catalyst OEM is targeted at customers that build their own products and services and would like to have our science as part of their offerings. Since the science is now available in component pieces, it's easier than ever to insert our technology into your products. Catalyst Professional and Catalyst Enterprise, formerly known as Geomatica and GXL, can now be purchased in different ways. We listened to those of you that didn't want large purchase prices and would prefer to pay on a subscription basis, which allows for different financial treatment of your purchases. Some of you didn't want to have to purchase hardware at all. So Catalyst Professional and Catalyst Enterprise are now available in the cloud. For Catalyst Enterprise, it's also scalable in the cloud. As you need more compute power to take on those bigger jobs, you can increase the size or the number of servers and Catalyst Enterprise will take advantage of the new hardware. Once that big job's finished, you can scale it back down and keep your costs aligned to the work that you do. Finally, if you need to work in the traditional fashion and purchase the software, you can still do that too. Today, we're gonna to demonstrate Catalyst Insights. It's a product that we're very proud of, and I'll give you an overview of how it works, and then Kevin's gonna take you through a real world use case of the product. First, we start with a problem that needs to be solved. That's on the left. Today, it'll be an electrical grid problem, but it could be anything from natural resources exploration to emergency response. Once we know what the problem is, we can identify earth observation and non-EO data that are required to help solve that problem. We identify the raw data required ingested into the Insights data fabric. The data fabric is unique in that the data does not have to be moved into the fabric. It can be referenced by the fabric and remain where it is. Once we know that there's new data available, we automatically process it so that it's ready for analysis. This means it's properly aligned to the planet and all other corrections needed for the data source are done. We can now compare all data sets between each other and over time. Today, you'll see an optical and radar information combined with an electrical grid road and land parcel information over a two-year period. If there's further analysis required for the solution, level three processing is automatically triggered upon seeing the new ARD data. And finally, we make that information available to a visualization product for you to interact with and API services layer so that any downstream systems can get access to the information as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin for a demonstration of Catalyst Insights. Thanks, Dan. So what I'd like to do is to demonstrate a downstream information product that can be accessed by a non-Earth observation end user. The information that can be generated through Earth observation when it's combined with non-Earth observation data can support decision-making, in this case, as it relates to infrastructure. That's the example that we're gonna be showing. I'd like to state that as I give this demo, this is a real world scenario. It's using Sentinel-1 imagery that we have processed using our technology, our core science that we've developed over many decades, and most recently over the last few years. And we've used Catalyst Insight services directly within a cloud-based environment that we have created, which actually brings our INSAR processing workflow next to the data. We've developed this example together with one of our customers who works for a power utility, as Dan alluded to. He's the perfect example of a downstream non-Earth observation expert end user. 
He's actually attended multiple power generation trade shows over the last few years, and he's generally familiar with the benefits of satellite imagery and satellite-based uh, monitoring, and he actually even knows what INSAR is. Um, in his circles, it's referred to as space-based surveying. This customer that we're going to be walking you through the scenario today works for a utility that manages power distribution. And this utility has many substations that are located across the city. So the, the substations supply the different neighborhoods and also some major customers. Since some of the infrastructure is underground, it's very important to understand the stability and the risk associated with subsidence to this infrastructure. Interruption in service can have a direct impact for revenue for this utility, not to mention the cost of repair if the infrastructure is damaged. This utility actually faces competition. Customers have a choice. Downtime on the utility has a direct impact on a KPI that's referred to as System Average Interruption Duration Index, or SAIDI. So let me paint a picture and walk you through a status quo scenario. I'd like to start by describing the current status quo for this customer. As you can see, this customer has received an email that summarizes a power outage. The information that's contained in the email tells him that there's been a revenue loss that's represented by the number of hours that have been lost in terms of uh, kilowatt hours uh, sold. And this customer actually knows that there was something, suspected that something was wrong and wanted to be able to prevent this. The risk for subsidence are actually quite high in this, in this area because there's a deficit in terms of uh, water recharge in the aquifer and it's a very fragile uh, ecosystem that actually subsides quite a bit because there's a lot of um, extraction of water from the aquifer for agricultural production and also the growing population in this, in this area. So I'd like to uh, paint a picture and, and let's challenge the status quo and let's think about uh, if there was a better way if this customer had received a different email. So let's go to the different email that this customer could receive if he was subscribed to the Catalyst Insights service. In this scenario, the Catalyst, the, uh, the customer has subscribed to the service and they receive an automated alert that, that tells them that there's an unusual issue that's happening at a particular location that's going to affect his business. As you can see in the email that's been automatically generated through Catalyst Insights, gives him the precise location of concern which is a major issue for this particular utility because one of the biggest customers that they have is located at this address. So I wanna show you how easy it is for this customer to use Catalyst Insights and perform a rapid assessment. So let me move over to Catalyst Insights and, and give you the live demonstration. So as you can see, now that I'm logged in, I'm showing an overview map that's giving the general trends in the area. I'm going to animate the time series, and what we see is, is deformation information that's been calculated over two, a period of two years from the Sentinel-1 imagery, and it's presented in such a way that this non-Earth observation end user can consume it very easily. The colors represent the rates of deformation or the severity of the deformation that's occurred over the different areas. Some of these areas have deformations on the order of 45 or more centimeters over the period of two years. That can have a serious impact on infrastructure. The reason there's so much displacement or deformation occurring over this area is because of the large scale agri agricultural production, which you can see these large agricultural production areas, and also the growing population. So let me turn this uh, animation off for one second. You can see that I can actually highlight the different parts of the deformation and very easily see where the trouble spots are. I'm gonna turn on the alert location of where I've been alerted to where this um, displacement issue has occur is occurring. And I can also turn on the utility lines. So these are all the utility lines that I manage as, as the utility. And you can see that as I zoom in, this particular line is servicing one of our major customers. So this is a large industrial facility that represents a large portion of the income that we generate through the, uh, through the utility uh, service that we provide here. 
So I'm going to take a closer look. I'll turn off the utility line for one second. And what I'd like to get a sense of is the, is the risk level. So um, for this user who's not an expert in earth observation, they really want to get a sense of what is the level of risk. So what I'll do is I'll turn on, on a per parcel basis, the level of risk that's been identified. And you can see that as I hover my mouse, I get instantaneous information on a per parcel basis that gives me the risk level. The risk levels are ranked from zero to five on an ordinal scale, and they've been classified according to the displacement values. So risk level one is low, which represents zero to 0 0.1 centimeters per week. May not seem like a lot, but over the course of one year, that can accumulate to uh 25 or more centimeters on on over over the year which which would cause serious damage to infrastructure risk level two is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and so on so what i can do is i can zoom out i'll just quickly turn off the reference layer underneath and i'll show you that there's actually a trend yeah. within the city that tells you that there's a severity of risk in a particular part of the city that's um, subsiding more rapidly than other parts of the city. As I zoom out, you can actually see this trend. The area where the alert has been triggered is the most severe location for that risk. And the peripheral area on the outside of the city over to the, over to the east over here uh, has a lower level of risk. So I can highlight those different areas. So here's risk level one, risk level two, and three, and so on. And I can instantly see what the trouble spots are. Similarly, what I can do is I can turn on the road network and get the same kind of information for all of the different road segments. So you can see as I zoom out, some parts of the city are not affected in terms of the risk level because the rates of deformation are not affecting this particular location. So to get a more detailed look, I'm going to turn on the actual information that was derived from the space-based surveying. So I'll zoom back into my location of interest. And you can see here that the alert that was triggered is right next to the substation that was um, that is located next to the uh, the major client that's been uh, identified here. So let me turn on the surveying points from the satellite-based information. And what I can do is I can interactively change the legend. So for example, if I wanted to actually highlight the information and get more granularity in terms of the severity for this particular location. I can change my legend from minus 32 to minus 37 of cumulative displacement. I can turn off the alert location. I can zoom out and I can get a sense of how this area is, is uh, subsiding relative to the surrounding area. You can see that as I zoom out in the city, some parts of the city are more severely affected than others. And I have a sense as to what's happening over this particular location. Finally, what I can do is I can go back into my location of interest and I can select the points that are of interest to me. So this particular point here that's right next to the substation, I'll highlight it along with a few other points. And then I can choose to export this data out to whatever platform I want to use. I could uh, export this out to Excel and do further analysis, or as Dan was highlighting in the presentation, uh, in the slides before the demo, uh, this could actually be directly uh, put into uh, enterprise system using our Catalyst Insights API. So the preventative maintenance that can be applied to avert the power outage or damage to other critical infrastructure, which could be gas lines or water di distribution systems, makes accessing the information from Catalyst Insights through this subscription very much worthwhile. Whoops. Sorry. So I just want to say a couple of other things in terms of the demonstration that you saw and its applicability to other markets. The one that we chose to show today is infrastructure. And the information that we derived was using uh, synthetic aperture radar imagery, Sentinel-1. Other imagery could be used as well. We could use Terrasar for higher resolution, RadarSat-2. Uh, RCM in the case of Canada, Allos, et cetera. The platform that we have been developing over those many decades supports all of those sensors 
and allows us to bring that information or derive the similar kind of information on the rates of deformation over these different locations very easily. We can combine it with other earth observation data. In this case, we used earth obs uh, we used electro-optical data as a reference base map, but we could also use that to uh, get a more context in terms of understanding what's happening over this particular location. The non-Earth observation data that we showed you included simple things like the electrical grid uh, location, uh, how many volts uh, are, are distributed across those power lines could have obviously a, a big impact. Uh, things like a parcel layer, which you saw, road segments, any kind of information really could be brought in to build uh, the information uh, that you saw in Catalyst Insights. The same can be done for other sectors, forestry, mining, emergency response, carbon accounting. Um, the, the, uh, really the, the depth and breadth that June alluded to uh, in the opening of this uh, webinar in terms of the technology that we can bring to bear and to deliver it is really amazing. And we're very excited to deliver the information in this, in this new way. So that's our last slide, um, and I want to encourage you to get in touch. Uh, hopefully this uh, gives you a sense of uh, what we've done here. Uh, we think it's a real game changer in terms of how we're delivering our technology, and we want to talk. So we encourage you to get in touch with us, sales at catalyst.earth. We've created some new social channels which you can reach out on, and we're really excited to uh, bring this to you. Our website is live as of now. If you head to catalyst.earth, you can uh, view all of our offerings and get more detail. The demonstration that I gave today is live at insights.catalyst.earth. You can definitely go check out that layer as well. And uh, yeah, we're very excited to, uh, to bring this to you. I'll leave the last word for June. Thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, like I said, this is, is pretty monumental in terms of uh, where we move forward with Catalyst. Uh, the team has done an outstanding amount of work uh, over the last several months, and it, we are, we're just open, we're ready to talk, we're ready to engage and uh, have a different type of conversation to solve these challenges, not only for our clients, for our partners, uh, for our customers, and, and get at it. So. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, please reach out. We're, uh, we're standing by and happy to chat about what we're up to next. Thank you.